So, ladies and gents, Dune uh, is getting lots and lots of hubbub. Yes, I'm a little bit sunburned. Uh, Dune's getting lots and lots of hubbub, and this is only part one, right? If you didn't know, ladies and gents, this Dune movie is just part one of the book. Uh, it's going to be a runtime of about two and a half hours. Good runtime for this film. I'm a little bit concerned about the runtime for, like, normies. That tends to actually put a lot of people off, but for everyone else, great. Like, the runtime's fantastic. This is just the first half of the book. The setup, if you will. And part of the agreement that Denis had was that, you know, they would be making another one. Or so we thought. Now, he has come out and stipulated that he's going to be ready to do this by a certain time. And that's all very promising. But he also, in that information, essentially presented that, hey, it's reliant on the box office. Which I guess we all knew anyway. Um, but I'm thinking... In terms of his wording, it's going to be a case of this movie has to make X, Y, and Z for us to greenlight the sequel. And I really hope they do. I really, really hope they do. Obviously, I've not seen it yet. I do have a bit of bias. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm happy to admit it. But I still hope they greenlight the sequel, if this is any good. If this is any good. So we're going to dive into that today. First and foremost, Jasper cameo. Yes, I'm a bit wet as well. Sweaty. It's been hot outside today. Um... So, basically, that's what we're going to be diving into today, ladies and gents, is just the information with respect to all of this and, you know, how it pertains and how it's all going to move along. Uh, and this was the actual quote specifically here, uh, which said, and again, I do find this interesting. So, he says, to go quickly in a movie of that size, you still need to make sets, costumes. So, we are talking about months, he explained to Slash Film. Uh, and this is all to do with the sequel. But if ever, and just to go back to that point, it, it sounds almost like they're looking to scrap the costumes that they've, they've already had rather than put them in storage. Because storage will cost thousands, you know, tens of thousands, I'm sure. Um, and I'm sure they could reuse a whole bunch of the set pieces as well. And I, I, they filmed this out in um, Budapest. So... You'd think that they'd just be able to put it in cheap storage over there. But again, sounds like probably not. To go quickly in a film of that size, you still need to make sets, costumes, so we're talking about months. But if ever, here we go, there's enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Uh, enthusiasm. Uh, enthusiasm, and the movie is greenlit sooner than later. So it's not been greenlit yet. Balls. It kind of contradicts what we'd previously heard. And that sucks to hear. I will say that I will be ready to shoot in 2022 for sure. I would love to because I'm ready to go. And I will say that I would love to bring it to the screen as soon as possible. So what can we unpack there uh, from that specific statement, ladies and gents? What can we unpack? Well, I mean, ultimately, we are looking at him essentially admitting it's not greenlit yet. And that is a shame, right? That is a shame. The earliest he can do it is going to be 2022. I can't imagine we're talking any less than, well, in terms of months of it's being released than, um, well, at the tail end of this year, you're looking at probably December, January time, it would be greenlit. Months from there, summer. Ah, it's a long time to wait, isn't it? Oh, I really do hope this has the potential to be the smash hit that I'm expecting. Um, I really want it to be, and I want this to be a beacon for these kind of films to come back. Uh, I've said many, many times that, you know, I let's, steer, let's invest more money in these films rather than the superhero films. I get that they make money, but I'd love to see a return uh, of this type of product. Now, he also said this, right? Uh, and I, I still think he... I do think he understands it. You know, fundamentally, I do think he does. Now, he says this. The tough task in part one was to introduce you guys to this world, to the ideas, to the codes, to the cultures, the different families, the different planets. And that's, Dune is so expansive. And just to sort of, <clears throat> I guess, indicate its cultural significance, Dune is what inspired George Lucas to write Star Wars, right? Uh, Star Wars is heavily inspired by Dune, heavily inspired. Um, so the cultural significance is massive, but it is huge. It is an expansive story. 
So he says this, once this is done, it becomes an insane playground. And that makes so much sense. It's like, hey, part one, we need to set it up. We need you guys invested in this world, right? We need you to understand what's going on here. Because it is kind of like Star Wars times, times 10 in terms of everything that's going on. You understand it, great. Let's go balls to the wall, like he says, you know. No, he doesn't say go balls to the wall, but he does say, you know, it becomes an insane playground. And he does sort of, not, not the right phrase, but he does say it. He says, so it will allow me to go to berserk and really create. I should not say this, but I will say that for me, June part one is like an appetizer. Love it. What a great thing to say. June part two is the main meal where we can add much more. That's what I can say. As much as June Part 1 was by far my most exciting project ever, June Part 2 is already getting me even more excited. Fundamentally, this is a man that gets June, I think. Uh, and a lot, again, a lot of people point to uh, Leet um, being race-swapped and gender-swapped and things like this. Um, at the end of the day, there would be mandates from the studio to do certain things. Which is outside of Denis' control. Everything that Denis is saying here indicates he does understand it. He does get it. And that's positive because if everything else is under his control, in terms of the direction, the story, how things move, everything's portrayed, it's edited, cinematography, etc. And he gets it. That's great. You know? And that's really, really good. Uh, and there's been some very strange individuals popping up on some of these videos talking about how, you know, the lead looks like an effeminate child. I'm like, yeah, he's supposed to. <laughs> like, he's absolutely supposed to look like a child. That is the point. It's like 15 or 16. You know, he is a young kid uh, caught in all of this. You know, he is supposed to be a, uh, a child, uh, effectively. But this is positive, also negative. Denis indicates that he gets it firmly. Great. Massively positive. However, the sequel's not greenlit like I thought it was. I'm, you know, I'm not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I do did know ultimately it would still be down to the box office taking, and that's always a shame. And but I do. I, what we had previously learnt was that he had signed on because uh, there was the possibility of continuing it. Uh, it seemed a lot more certain than this, so that's a shame. Because um, he seems to be going back on that. But let me know what you guys think down below. Is this a film you're looking forward to? Do you not get it? Do you get it? Do you, do you want to watch it? What? Let me know down below uh, in the comment section. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Why? Well, because it's the end of the video. You clearly enjoyed it. Uh, please do support the channel further. We've got memberships open. We've got Patreon open. You get stuff for that. Weekly playthroughs, weekly members only streams, things like that. Uh, and also, I've got a second channel where I rebuild cars and do some vlogs and stuff. You can find that linked in the description box down below. Cheers, guys. Take care.